I was 13 years old when I went to Turnabout Ranch. I feel like it's very important for me to speak on this because I kept my mouth shut for so long. I did touch on it a couple times in different situations, but I really want to get my whole story out there and let everything just be out because that's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like there's no evidence of none of this. And obviously all the staff is in on it. So they're not going to snitch on each other. All you really have is the kids that are there. So a young lady, her name is Hannah. She recently um, spoke out because while she was there, she was uh, sexually assaulted. And then when she reported that she was assaulted, uh, she was punished by staff. Now, when I seen the punishment she was given, I knew like, okay, I, yeah, I really have to say something. Like I really have to have her back on this because I, I truly believe that they did that. So Dr. Phil, I'm going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, not only to me, but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm gonna handle things my way. Somewhere in the middle of August, I went I went on the Dr. Phil show and my mom and my grandma knew they were sending me here. I didn't know I was going. I went school shopping right before because the school was supposed to start when I got home from LA from doing the show. So part of the whole Dr. Phil show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in Utah, but they're all wilderness programs and they're all fucked up. Okay, so Turnabout is in the middle of Escalante, Utah. It's a very, 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 very small town. It's got one gas station, one, one grocery store. Everybody knows everybody there. You see you're in the middle of nowhere. You know there's nowhere to run. If you try to run out there, you're either, they're gonna find you, you're gonna get in more trouble, or you're, if you do get away, you're gonna get eaten by a coyote or something. I was taken there against my will. They give you transporters. Um, transporters are two people, a male and a female, that come in in the middle of the night. They don't tell them where they're going. They just take them, they handcuff them, they put them in the car it's basically like kidnapping we got there I got out of the car and I just seen it was like it looked like nothing it was just super dark I seen like all the circles and stuff and I seen the little cabin and I was like oh shit I'm not built for this like I'm this little bougie ass so for the first three days you're there is no showering they put you in a circle which is a, it's a TP it's a little TP but it's open and you have to sit there for three days and they wouldn't let me lay down for nothing like I was falling asleep and they were like, uh-uh, get up, get up. So I'm just sitting here like, this is gonna be really bad. When I seen these people have no sympathy, I was like, oh, I'm really, like, I'm really doomed. They strip you from your whole personality. You have to act like just whoever they want you to act like. They told me, okay, these are what your chores are gonna be. I don't remember what they were, but they were like, these are what your chores are gonna be. This is what you're gonna be doing. Here's your level one binder. If you do the same thing every day, chop wood, take care of the animals. This place is all about taking away privileges. Like, okay, yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food, not being cold. I remember the first time I got in trouble. Now, I, this is my first time being here. Like, I don't really, like, yeah, y'all explain to me the rules, but I'm 13. Like, I don't really know, like, exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There's been times where I uh, I reported um, another student acting inappropriate or um, just anything like that. It didn't even have to do with me, and I would get in trouble for just witnessing it. If you reported a ch another kid, like, getting bullied by, like, their peers or something, they would just say, well, maybe that's what they need or like something like that. But even though there was written rules, if, if a staff was angry at the moment or if you just did something that they felt was bad, you, they, you would get your own punishment. Like they would make up their own punishment. It's really frustrating because even if you don't know the rules, if you fuck up, you're still in trouble. It's, there's not no, I didn't know. You're still, you're still in deep shit. I mean, shit that's minor is major to them. So if you do something like the tiniest, tiniest thing, you get a check. If not, you have to be on reflection. Reflection is the punishment. When you do something so bad, or if you do anything that ticks them off, you have to go on reflection. You walk in the arena for hours on end. You sit outside in the cold on the, on the floor. You have to pick up piles in a wheelbarrow of horse shit and they want big piles, so if you have to do 25 piles, you're really doing like 50 wheelbarrows. So while I was there, just a lot of crazy things happened. I seen a kid get held down for trying to leave. Just honestly, I don't think he was trying to run away. I think he was just trying to like walk out the door and just like get some time to himself and they restrained him, they held him down. They, they had no problem holding kids down. It's just our word against the staff's word when you're there because there's no witnesses, there's no cameras, you don't have a phone, there's none of that. That's why I was always so scared to speak out because it's like no one's going to believe me. 
a lot of things that like happened to me there I was it, it hurt me so bad because I was genuinely like confused I'm writing letters to my mom like mom I will do anything like you don't understand what this place is like like you can't do this to me like I will do anything I'll do therapy every day like I will go through an uh, out, uh, outpatient program all that like just please let me come home the staff when I got there was this dude Jimmy and this dude Ted these are the night staff two of the night staff surround me they were really really sweet One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the staff members was standing right next to me and she had her walk on her so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy and he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Roundy come down and then they didn't. They told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all in a circle and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies, Jimmy died. And so we're all freaking out because Jimmy was, like I said, he was one of them that was there the first day I got there. He was really sweet. Not only did Jimmy die, but one of the other staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, who was the daughter of the nurse. Alicia, she was um, also injured and two years later she died and she was also left disabled after being attacked by Clay. So the mother of um, the kid Clay who killed the staff, uh, she was married to the brother of the president of the program, which I also believe is a conflict of interest. I don't know why they would do that. So it was really sad. Like they wouldn't tell us what happened and all that. And any of the kids that were there, like they couldn't talk about it, but they were like really traumatized by it. Even the ones that weren't there were traumatized by it. Like I heard it over the walkie, like that's scary. Like, like so you got kids here that are killing people. And like I said earlier, like my mom had always threatened me as like, oh, I'm sending you away, I'm sending you away, but she never did it. This was the first time she really did it. Like, I, I never thought my mom would do this. What parents need to understand is if your child is acting out because of trauma, like sexual abuse, or maybe like the kid's parents got divorced or just anything like that, you don't send your kid to a program like this. You need to send your kid to a program where they're not being punished and, and it's not about everything's not about you're in trouble you're in trouble and it's just it's just really fucked up you're you're just using children to keep your ranch going and you're not even feeding them or letting them sleep in decent condition just doing things that no one would ever want done to their child and not even that and and, and doing it to kids who are so helpless and when you know that you're watching their letters, you know that they don't have any contact with their parents. So I don't, I'm not really sure why Dr. Phil still sends kids here. It just, it really doesn't make sense. Like, are you trying to help them or are you trying to hurt them even more? Cause I mean, we all know he's a phony as it is, but like, don't be sending kids somewhere just to make, make it look like you're trying to do something. There was already lawsuits before I went there. There's now many more after, but there was one as far back as 2012. Now this place has been going since the nineties, I think. So I could just imagine like how much bad stuff has happened there. These are documented things that have happened. Just the abuse, the, the malnourishing, physical abuse, mental abuse, all that. And this place is still up and running. It just doesn't make sense. How, how could you not know about the murder? It was on national, like, national news. How could you not know about that? 